Okay, so this video I'm going to demonstrate how you would go about programming the Vertex 5 board to actually use input and output and get a program onto the board. Um, this first design is going to be really, really straightforward. So, like a new project, and we're going to call that project test.io. And we want to make sure that we've got the Vertex 5, the VLX110T, uh, speed grade 3, that corresponds to our board. Uh, make sure our preferred language is set for Verilog. Go ahead and click Next. And then Finish. We have a brand new project. And make a Verilog module called Test.io. And it's going to have a clock, which we don't strictly need, but it'll make sense in just a minute. Uh, we're going to have button in, and we're going to have LED out. And we're going to go ahead and change that to be an output port. And we'll hit finish. And through the magic of Verilog, uh, we have an empty module. Typically what we want to make sure we do here is specify that we have our wires set up. So input wire clock, input wire button in, output reg, LED out. Remember, using output uh, register, we can um, assign values to that signal. So at this point, always at the pause edge of the clock, we can begin. And um, we could do something silly like if button in equals 1, LED out equals 0, else LED out equals one. Not exactly the most complex design. I guess theoretically what we could do is go ahead and try to simulate it to make sure that it works, but this is a pretty straightforward design. So now what we can do is we can actually go to um, user constraints. And what we want to be able to do is assign pins on the FPGA package to our wires and registers here. And we have to know the names of the pins that we're going to go after. There's over 1,100 pins on this package. So to find out the names for these things, I can actually go to the internet and find the XUP uh, reference manual. Okay, so to find the reference manual, the place we want to go is to Digilent's website. Digilent is the company that makes the board and in particular what we're after here is the XUP V5 board which is its name and we'll go to their website and browse through that looks like our board. Um, really what we're after here is the documentation which takes us back to Xilinx. We want the user manual and the user manual will bring up, through some click elation, um, a PDF with all of the information that we're interested in. At this point, we could probably read through most of this, um, but that's not really what we're after. Um, we need to know the name of the clock. In this case, the clock that we want to use is actually the 100 megahertz clock, which is called user clock. And its name on the print is X1, but the name of the pin is AH15. So we can write that down because we'll need that as input to our design. Um, the GPIO dip switches, those are the switches that we move up and down. Those aren't really what we're after here. Um, we're after these LEDs, and if we look on the board, the bottom of the board, there is a number of LEDs. Uh, LED 0 will serve us just fine. Actually, any of these would work, but in this case, the LED H18 um, will be what we want. That's the name of the pin on the FPGA that will take us to the LED, and it actually is on the blueprint, or the schematic print, DS17. Um, the next thing we need is the push button, and there's a few of these push buttons on the board. Um, we'll use the center pin, center button, uh, which has the name AJ6. 
if we look in the board, you could um, actually see these pins on the board. Um, and you can actually see these parts on the board. Uh, these pins are all hidden underneath the package. All right, so at this point now, we can go back to our design. And I want to assign to the board uh, kind of the mapping of our, our wire names to our board names. And this is done through a process called uh, plan ahead. So we'll go ahead and say yes here to create a new user constraint file. And um, running plan ahead, uh, looks like it's going to take a couple seconds for it to launch. Um, I either click on it a couple times and then it all popped up all at once. So maybe just be patient, uh, especially if your machine is a little slow. Um, but at this point, Plan Ahead is going to analyze your Verilog design and decide what are the external pins. So these are wires and registers that aren't connected to anything internal to your Verilog design, and hence external. And what Plan Ahead does then is it actually shows you the footprint of the FPGA and all of the different I.O. banks, um, which is kind of neat, but not really what we're after. Um, what we're after is assigning wires to pins. So if I look over here, I see our wires, our nets, in this case button in, clock, and LED out. And what we're going to try to do here is expand the window a little bit so that we can actually see each of these. And when I click on one, here's button in. Button in is the pin that we want to go to site AJ6. That was the center button on the pin. I need more screen real estate. So we would apply. Our clock was AH15. And our LED out is A sorry H18. For each of the I.O. sites, um, each of these lives in a bank. Each bank shares a common I.O. standard. Um, there are many different kinds of standards um, that are supported by the Vertex 5. These refer to the type of voltage levels that make up true and false. So for example, if we were hooking this up to a 3.3 volt device, we would want to change the I.O. standard to be 3.3. Um, it changes what true and false are and also changes the voltage level that the, is driven out on those lines. Um, in this case, the 2.5 volt is sufficient. Uh, there's actually what's called a level shifter on the board so that it will level shift a 2.5 input or output to whatever voltage is actually on the board. All right, so we'll just leave everything else the way it is. We hit save. Um, we can actually quit out of plan ahead. Um, you can mess around in here and actually experiment and explore all the different features of this tool. It's actually kind of neat how that works. But what plan ahead has done, if it's done its job right, is it's created this UCF file or user constraint file and it's labeled the net, in this case the name, to the location on the board. Um, and at this point, if we go to synthesize the board, um, we will see that it builds our design, and then generate the final programming file. And if this goes well, we'll be ready to actually program the board. Um, I'm going to leave that to its own video. Uh, programming the board is going to be very different for every different version of Xilinx. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off. But this is how you identify, using the user guide, what the location names are for the different ports, and um, how you actually use the constraint file to assign locations to your wires.